I'm not ashamed. What did Moses say to Israel just before he climbed Mount Nebo? This is the question we seek to answer today as we continue our verse by verse study of the book of Deuteronomy on Walking Through the Bible. If you have a Bible with you, turn to Deuteronomy chapter 33. We're going to be reading from verses 1 to 6. If you don't have a Bible, don't worry. Just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So Deuteronomy 33, beginning at verse 1. Now this is the blessing with which Moses, the man of God, blessed the children of Israel before his death. And he said, The Lord came down from Sinai and dawned on them from Seir, he shone forth from Mount Paran. He came with ten thousand saints. From his right hand came a fiery law for them. Yes, he loves the people. All his saints are in your hand. They sit down at your feet. Everyone receives your words. Moses commanded a law for us, a heritage of the congregation of Jacob. And he was king in Jeshurun. When the leaders of the people were gathered, all the tribes of Israel together, let Reuben live and not die nor let his men be few. Moses is preparing to climb Mount Nebo to see the promised land and die, just as the Lord has said. Before he does, we have chapter 33 and the blessings that Moses bestowed on the children of Israel, one final act as their leader. Listeners should compare these blessings from Moses with the blessings bestowed on the tribes from Jacob found in Genesis 49, for they resemble each other in many points. The differences that we will find arise out of the difference in the relationship between the speaker and the tribes, with Jacob being their father and Moses being the prophet of God. And of course, how the prospect of these tribes has changed over the past 400 years. Before we get into the blessings themselves, we have an introduction of this benediction. Verse 1 begins by telling us that it is, in fact, Moses who gave the benediction. He is described as the man of God, something only said of Moses here and two other places in Scripture that we haven't studied yet, namely Joshua 14, verse 6 and Psalms 90. The phrase man of God here means more than just one who stood righteous before God, forgiven by God's grace through faith. The phrase carries with it the idea that Moses was the one divinely chosen of God as his messenger to speak the word of God to the people. Thus, this title being used here once again showed Israel the authority that Moses' words were carrying. Moses' benediction thus begins where it should, with God. Any blessings that Moses was going to bestow had to be given with God's approval, for God is the one who was going to be blessing Israel, because Moses was about to die. Thus, these blessings were not the mere wishes of Moses, but blessings bestowed on Israel by God. And as such, Moses describes God just who he is. The one who came down from Sinai and dawned on them from Seir, which is Mount Seir, and from Mount Paran, both mountains which can be found on our map in southern Edom. What this means is that the Lord has been with them in all their journeys, from the giving of the law on Mount Sinai, through the wilderness wanderings, all the way to the plains of Moab. That God was not simply a God present at Mount Sinai and nowhere else can be seen as a comparison to the false gods of the nations round about them, in that these gods didn't follow these nations anywhere, for they were not real. Wherever their image was, that was where they were, for the images had no life and no ability to function. The true God, on the other hand, could follow his people wherever they went. It is said in the New King James Version that God came to Israel with ten thousand of saints. The more accurate translation of this is that God came to Israel from among ten thousands of saints. In other places in scriptures, we see that the throne of God is surrounded by angelic beings who worship him continually. And so what is being conveyed here is that God came from his throne and manifested himself to Israel at Mount Sinai in the cloud, something we read of in Exodus 19 and 20. The number 10,000 here is used symbolically to mean a perfect or complete number, as multiples of 10 are sometimes used this way in scripture, especially when talking about spiritual things. When God manifested himself to Israel, from his right hand came a fiery law for, him, for them. This phrase, fiery law, is a little confusing, confusing as to what is meant, but the most likely meaning is that from the midst of the fire of Mount Sinai, that Exodus 19, 18 speaks of, a law came. The reason that the law was given was because he loves the people and wanted them to be able to approach him in holiness. 
In other words, the law was given to Israel as a benefit, not a curse. It only turned into a curse when they failed to follow it. The Lord was their king in Jeshurun, which, in, which we said in chapter 32 was another name for Israel, and as such ruled over them and wanted to bless them through the law delivered to them by the hand of Moses. Having now shown Israel who would bless them, Moses now turns to deal with each tribe separately. He begins with Reuben, the oldest, though he will not be following birth order from here on out. Back in Genesis 49, Jacob revealed to Reuben that he was being stripped of his birthright for sleeping with Jacob's concubine. Jacob said that Reuben would not excel because of this, something that up to that point had been true, for recall that the population of Reuben had drastically declined from when they left Egypt up until this point. However, Moses was going to tell Reuben that they would not be wiped out and his men would not be few. Now, this didn't mean that Reuben would become great and numerous, for we know compared to other tribes, he would not. However, the tribe of Reuben would not go extinct in Israel and would inherit, something that was a blessing to the ears of that tribe, no doubt. We'll continue with Moses' blessings, the Lord willing, in the next lesson. With that, our time is up for today. The Lord willing, we hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of Deuteronomy chapter 33, verses 7 to 11, as we continue our walk through the Bible. One verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world.